in many ways the most scary chapter in the Bible is Matthew 23. It wasn't addressed to people in the pews. It was addressed to ministers, to rulers of the church. When I was a small boy, just becoming a Christian, the verse I liked best, I'll read it to you. They tie up heavy loads and put them on men's shoulders. I realised then that true religion was not burdensome. Christ rebuked the religious leaders because they made religion hard. They tie heavy burdens on people. Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Look, he forgives us time and again. He loves us. He walks beside us. He's made 300 promises in the Bible for us. Eternal life awaits us. A new body awaits us. How we should love him. Because his religion is easy, his burden is light. But in this chapter, Christ condemns any religion that's burdensome. A religion that's only do's and don'ts is burdensome. True religion will have some do's and don'ts, but it's mainly about kindness, grace, faith, hope, love, unselfishness, purity, truthfulness. Never forget, sin is suicide. Purity is paradise. Christ's way is a way of joy, peace, happiness, eternal life. Let me read you some of the chapter. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. You must obey them in everything they tell you, meaning the things that are right, but don't do what they do. They do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy loads, put them on men's shoulders. They themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for men to see. They make their phylacteries wide, the borders of their garments, and the tassels on their garments long. They love the place of honour at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues. They love to be greeted in the marketplace and to have men call them Rabbi, my teacher. But you are not to be called rabbi. You have only one master and you are all brothers. Do not call anyone on earth father for you have one father and he's in heaven. Nor are you to be called teacher for you have one teacher, the Christ. The greatest among you all will be your servants Whoever exalts himself will be humble. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. And then come seven woes. Our Lord began with the Sermon on the Mount where he gave seven blessings. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are they that sorrow. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are they that hunger. Blessed are the merciful, the peacemakers those that are persecuted. He began with seven blessings. Now he finishes his ministry. This is his last public talk. And it ends with seven woes. Read them. It condemns any religion that makes a lot out of trifles and ignores the big things. What are the big things? Love and goodness, kindness, 
unselfishness, repentance. It condemned any religion that's purely negative. It condemned any religion that's just a lot of externals. And it condemned any religion where the leaders are tyrants, expecting their people to obey their every word and believe everything they say. It's a scary chapter, but it's good news. When you read this chapter, you know what religion to avoid. Most religion's bad. Unless religion makes you honest and pure and kind and truthful, you've got the wrong one. Only when we love Christ do we love righteousness. But I want you now to notice the last part of this scary chapter. Let me read it to you. He says, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you are not willing. Look, your house has left you desolate, for I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. What humility of God the Son to liken himself to a hen caring for her chicks. My friends, we should fear to grieve God. But after that, there's no need to fear God at all. For God is love. You know, there's three statements in the Bible about the nature of God. God is love. God is spirit. God is light. All these work together for our good. We see that Christ came to give himself for sinners. Most have rejected him, most will reject him, straight is the way, narrow is the gate, the lead to eternal life, few there be that find it. It's there, whoever seeks will find, whoever knocks will have it open to him, whoever prays will have answers. The fault is ours if we miss out. How often would I have gathered you? That's about me. That's about you. We're free to resist. He's not a bully. But he invites us to come. He says if we repent, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. Him that cometh to me, I'll in no wise cast out. He invites us to eat the bread of life. He that believeth is not condemned but has eternal life, has it now. Death becomes just a sleep, nothing to worry about. Sleep means we're going to get up. Sleep is restful. Sleep is restorative. For the believer, death is only a sleep. You needn't fear it. How often would I have gathered you as a hen gathers her chicks, and you would not. All who are lost are lost because of their own fault. All who are saved are saved by the grace of God, accepted. My dear friend, accept that grace today. God bless you.